Hello and in this tutorial I will be walking you through um, some of Maya's party goals. Um, so yeah, uh, the main objective of this tutorial is just to teach you how to make a basic uh, water stream using Maya's party goal system. So to start off we're going to make sure we're in the dynamics menu. Uh, click particles and click create a middle. Now as you can see there should be a middle in the center of your grid. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go down, I'm going to click show, turn off my grid, and I'm going to change my frame to 5000 just so I can uh, see my particles play out over a larger span of time. If I click the play button, you will see pretty much just what well, the basic emitter does. It is emitting particles in a spherical direction, they live forever, and I believe the count is at 100 particles per second. So I'm just going to stop that there. Uh, control A and you know, open up the attributes menu and this is pretty much our basic attributes for our particle we have our emitter okay this is what we're going to worry about first the emitter type at the moment is Omni so Omni pretty much just represents the spherical uh, shape it's taking we're going to go through and we're going to change that to directional now if you play that you will see it's traveling along the one direction which is defined in the distance direction distance direction attributes. Um, it's fine for it to go in that direction at the moment. We're just going to change the spread a little to uh, 1.4 should be good. Okay, yes, I'm happy with that. We're going to reduce the um, the rate at which they come out. Um, and we're going to click scale rate by speed. So this should speed them up a little. Yep, okay, that's looking fine so far. It is a little bit laggy. However, uh, that will do. Um, we will turn the speed up a little though. Uh, let's try 10. Okay, I think that's a little bit too fast. Okay, I think 4.3 shall do us for now. Now, this is pretty much just basically what our water spray effect is going to look like doesn't look like much at the moment. Um, as you can see, these are all just little dots. The particles themselves have no real definitive shape to them. So if we go to Particle Shape, which is the second tab next to Emitter, um, it should take us to this menu here. If we scroll down to Render Attributes, uh, we can open the drop-down tab for Particle Render Type, and we're just going to change that to Streak. Whoops, um, I scrolled through that one. I shouldn't have. Okay, now as you can see, these are longer streaks and would represent water, I feel, a little bit better. However, these are a little bit too long, uh, maybe not thick enough, so if we click Add Attributes for Current Render Type, it will give us pretty much the attributes to edit the, um, the way these streaks look. So, I'm just going to change the line width to 3. Um, that's fine. Zero point eight. That that looks good. I'm I'm happy with that for now. I think. So if we play that back, we can see that they are streaks of water, and they look just a little bit more realistic. Okay, we're gonna stop playing that now, and we're gonna open up our particle emitter once again. We go over to emitter one, and we're going to uh, change the lifespan. Okay. which is in particle shape 1 I believe okay so under our lifespan attributes um, at the moment that live forever we do want these particles to disappear after a while as they will start to really lag up the scene so we're gonna have a random range just so it's a little bit more dynamic and the lifespan random we'll just put to 0.5 yeah, let's see how far that gets us with our water. Okay, it's finishing about there. We want it a little bit longer for this, um, as it will be colliding with um, other objects in a few minutes. So we'll change that to, I think, 3. 3 will be a good number. Which just pretty much just makes it last 3 times as longer. Okay, change that down to 2.25. Yep, 
that'll do me. Okay. So as you can see, the water is pretty much just heading out in the same trajectory range at which it um, came from. This doesn't really have any uh, real world attributes to it. It's not being affected by gravity or wind or any of those factors. So uh, it's not really looking very natural. So if you select the particles, not the emitter, but the particles, um, and click fields, you can select gravity. This will apply gravity to your particle shape. So if we start that over, you will see it starts to um, pretty much just head straight down. Okay. I think that's a little bit too strong. Well, actually, no, no, that'll be fine for what we're doing. This um, the gravity is basically set to 9.8, which is uh, fairly equivalent to that of Earth's in a less accurate sense. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a plane. Now I'll just click 5, go into shaded, and we're going to make this uh, water interact with this plane. So it will bounce around and um, I pretty much just collide with it. So these are just some basic polygon extrusion techniques. If you're feeling lost at what I'm doing here, watch um, my video tutorials um, such as Introduction to Maya or Polygon Extrusion Techniques. Okay, we're going to move that a little bit closer so it comes in contact with the stream, so it will bounce a little bit more. I'm going to add an edge loop through the center. Ah, uh, yep, that's close enough. Uh, select the uh, two outside vertexes, scale them in a little, um, change to edge, select the edge, and crease that down these down so the water kind of flows down and out. Okay so now that we have our um, basic fountain modeled, um, if we select our water, select the mesh, go to particles and click make collide. And now they should collide. And there you go. As you can see they are bouncing unreal unrealistically high. Um, which you know can serve its purposes but for what we're after at the moment this will not do so what we're going to do is we're going to select the mesh control A to go to the um, attributes on um, the other attributes view and we're going to click geoconnector this pretty much just connects it to the particle and has the settings on how it how the particle behaves on pond collision at the moment the resilience is at one so this pretty much just um, factors out the um, amount of bounce it's going to have after each hit. So if we change that down to 0 0.5, let's have a look at that. Okay, that's a little bit better, but still a bit high. Okay, so we changed it to 0 0.5. Um, I think it's still bouncing a little bit too high. However, it should do as we will be adding friction. Friction pretty much is just behaves how slippery the arm surface is going to be. Um, at the moment, there's no friction, so it will pretty much slide endlessly. Um, let's change that to 0 0.001 as the friction properties will heavily change the way the animation appears if it is set too high. Okay, we will have to reduce the resilience 0.4. Yeah, 0 0.4 um, is looking a lot better. Um, so yeah, now we can go into the hyper shade, and we can create um, just a very basic um, water shader. I'm just going to use a uh, blend for this. Control A to open up the attributes. We'll change the color to a light blue transparency will set that fairly high ambient color fairly high incandescence will leave that at what it is turn translucence up eccentricity uh, we will keep that low as water generally has a finer point of light contact uh, specular roll off. 